monitoring your marketing action. Why is it important that you do that? Because uh, you should really always investigate what is going well and what is going wrong. And that is uh, going to serve you to plan more careful action <coughs> in the future. You may monitor them to steer the ongoing initiatives uh, differently. And that's also important. If you have a banner campaign, as I said yesterday, which is not performing well in the country, and has been done like that since uh, uh, several weeks, uh, you may decide that you want to shift uh, all your budget to the bundle campaign you have in another country. Um, plan future actions, uh, and that's uh, the main uh, part also for assessing well uh, your current uh, and past actions. Uh, and uh, um, you should understand, you should try to understand uh, with the monitoring tools you have at your disposal or you put in place uh, <coughs> um, what's the perception of your extension, what's the perception of the TLD in your country, both at the registrant and at the registrar level, and what's the level of competitiveness uh, of your TLD against the other extensions. So what are the, the um, monitoring tools that you may have at your disposal? It's the question. Maybe the, the, the number of growth, growth of the growth rates, uh, maybe uh, the queries on DNS for email and other to check the uh, Yeah, good point. DNS, DID. Uh, 
the registrar study, which you see, is uh, the registrar study we have conducted in 2013. And we have asked uh, the question, a .eu domain name can be an added value for, and as you can see, um, the registrants, the registrars, the large majority of the registrars that responded to the survey, say that uh, um, .eu can be an added value for any company with the transborder business. And that is followed by public authorities and SMEs. So in this case, uh, they are telling us uh, that there is a specific uh, group of SMEs, uh, that is, those I mean, SMEs uh, that wish to have transborder uh, markets, uh, transborder business, uh, which we should target for our campaigns. Uh, and they also should target for their campaigns. Uh, and, and this is really important to, to have this kind of knowledge, this kind of intelligence, because it, again, it helps you to define the uh, marketing efforts. Uh, we also asked uh, them uh, if .u domain names are reliable. And uh, as you can see, um, the, 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 the black part, which was blue in the, in the original slide, is 2013, and the yellow one is uh, um, 2012. <coughs> This is not end user, this is registrar stuff. Oh. This is registrar okay. So uh, this is a registrar survey. So .u is a .u domain reliable. Reliable meaning in the sense of uh, being perceived uh, as a reliable extension for your purposes. And uh, most of the registrars, they say, yeah, I agree that uh, it's a reliable extension. Um, for, <coughs> for correctness, uh, we have done it uh, we have requested the survey company with which we work to have the same kind of question with other dots. So we have the responses of other dots, including possibly new GTLDs. And some of them, they are saying that they're totally seen as not reliable. And this is really the bad, bad mark that you have. And to, to go from, from being totally unreliable to being reliable, it will take you a, a long, long time. But then, we also try to understand, and this is a part of the intelligence that the SDS said you should gather, how many top level domains uh, the registrars uh, who have responded to this survey, how many extensions they sell on average. And this survey was answered by uh, 118 registrars, and uh, uh, how many extensions do they manage, uh, do they sell? As you can see, the large majority of our registrars, uh, those registrars who responded, uh, they sell and they manage above 30 extensions. Uh, and uh, 50 out of these 118, so really a large percentage, a large group, uh, they manage over 150 extensions. Uh, so you understand uh, when you have this data that you are one out of 150. And all the 150, they would like to have their spotlight with this registrar channel. And that's why it's important uh, to create this circle of trust uh, with uh, your registrars. Uh, we also ask uh, our registrars if they're happy with our services, because uh, that's the last part of the survey. And we have uh, achieved an incredible uh, great satisfaction rate of 97% of registrars, uh, the survey registrars, uh, who say they are incredibly satisfied with our services, with the way we are dealing with them, with the way we are providing services uh, to them. And here you can see the way we have uh, uh, compared ourselves because uh, we have put uh, the others. Uh, and uh, as you can see, um, we have uh, a satisfaction rate which is uh, higher than others. And uh, we have also, and I'm not going to show the next uh, um, slides of this survey, but we have investigated why we are happier. And they say that they are happier, for instance, because uh, when we make changes to our systems, like multi registrations, uh, new transfer procedure, but recently, more recently, we completely changed our registration platform. And that was on the 15th of September 2014. And what happened is that we have communicated that we were going to move to a completely new registration platform uh, November the year before. So in November 2013, we said, warning, we have decided that on 15 September 2014, we switch 
to a new registration platform, meaning that for two entire days, uh, which were the 12 and the 13, no operation, no new registration, nothing was possible on our domain needs. The database was frozen to be moved uh, to the new registration platform. And having done that, uh, they say that uh, this is an incredible good example of communica communicating things in advance. Uh, and if you think, uh, if you go back to one slide, if you think that, uh, sorry, if you think that you are really one in a, of many they have to manage, uh, if uh, we all as TLD community communicate things well in advance, uh, they are given time to adjust themselves. And during these uh, over 10 months, uh, we communicated to them regularly what were the different uh, changes to be implemented at their level, at their side, uh, to get familiar, to get ready for the new registration software. The best thing, like it happened for the new trade and transfer <coughs> procedure, is that when we opened the new registrations in the new registration software, and they did, it didn't go as planned because we were supposed to start 8 in the morning uh, of the 15th of September, and at the end we started at 12. And I was there in the office sending emails to the registrars every 10 minutes saying, we are going to open soon, we are a technical issue that has to be fixed. And I was providing regular updates. But when we opened at 12 o'clock, everything was smoothly run. And we didn't have one single complaint from any registrar. And that was the best reward we could have because they were all happy that we have provided so much assistance, so much information. And that's why they say that uh, they were very happy, they are very happy with our satisfaction uh, against our services. So. But uh, not local, is it the CC? Not local, is the CC. And that local here is not mentioned, but of course we have the projection according to the registrar location. Right, and then, then what are the numbers in the squares, like plus two and plus one? It was plus two against last year, against the previous year. So it was 2013, uh, was, uh, um, in 2013 was 95, in, 2000, uh, in 2012 was 95, in 2013 is uh, uh, 97. And another, another survey that you can uh, run, but as I said, uh, pay attention to the cost, uh, is what we call the brand awareness survey. And this is done, what we have done, is on a sample of people across Europe. And in this case, there were 15,000 companies and people, individuals, who were surveyed about the way they perceived the .u, the extension. And they were, first of all, explained what .u is. They were explained what top-level domains is. And they were um, usually people with a certain familiarity of the internet people who have a domain name, people who use the internet on a daily basis. As you can see, um, the, um, in our case, the company invited us to have this uh, kind of uh, diagram uh, showing different kind of perception of people and companies against us, against .u. And as you can see, uh, the .u has been seen as very normative, consensus, uh, and consensus meaning uh, that uh, you know, the st uh, seen as a stable, uh, reasonable, trustworthy extension. This is, uh, you know, people how they uh, compare themselves against how they, they feel uh, when you, they see uh, a website with a .u extension. And uh, uh, we were quite happy to be seen as innovative. And it, in, indeed, uh, it's innovative because uh, uh, we are one of the late comers in the market. And the brand study also revealed to us that uh, because of uh, being a late um, cover in the market, uh, and this is the, should be the European Union flag, uh, um, we are in this uh, um, quadrant, which is a quadrant of uh, regi registries uh, whose uh, TLD has uh, still low awareness and low adoption. And that's because, again, we are not as popular as others. Uh, and those uh, very, very popular are um, the Netherlands and Denmark. And Bulgaria is there because in Bulgaria, um, there was a, um, several years ago an incredibly, at the time this uh, survey was developed, an incredibly huge campaign for Bulgarian domain names. That's why there is a quite high level of uh, adoption and also especially awareness of uh, the local um, top level domain. And it's another example, and this is what we talked about, that's why I'm going a bit faster, is uh, the use of that U. 
And we have said that we are doing this website categorization. And the website ca categorization, uh, uh, what we are doing is we are doing the website ca categorization not only for our um, um, domain names and the website that resolve in from our domain names, but also we take samples uh, from the zone files, so we have agreements with Maritime for .com and .net to take sample of uh, domain names from their website, their, their zone file, and, and check uh, how they resolve and uh, which kind of websites they resolve. And in our case, uh, the .u is uh, the, the blue one, so it's, it's the, the first uh, bar uh, of each of these bar groups. Uh, as you can see that uh, there is a good percentage on this page, but there is also a good percentage resolving to business websites. There is also a good percentage that is resolving to error. Not so much paperclip.com is more paperclip because there is a, a sort of a, um, philosophy of paperclip by uh, many registrants for .com domain names. Personal, we are not personal domain names. We are not personal extension domain name. Personal, as you can see, is more .org. And in personal, it includes also the category of community, being a, a, a community top level domain. Institutional, institutional again, um, if you see that the .u and the .org, they are those performing better. So it's very unlikely that uh, an institution, a public body, has a .com. It's more likely that it has, uh, in our case, a .u or a .org. And .org has been um, by definition, the um, institution or academic uh, um, dot. And uh, um, this was uh, a very special category, which was the porn category, uh, to try to see if uh, there were you know, certain kind of content associated with us. But we were uh, impressed with uh, looking at the fact that uh, in all the extensions we have this exercise, uh, the, uh, the number of these kind of sites uh, is incredibly low. And if we look at uh, uh, an infographic, uh, uh, you can see that <coughs> in terms of uh, um, being uh, more business-oriented, uh, the more business-oriented extensions, uh, according to this uh, manual categorization, are uh, .com, .biz, .pro, .u. And if you go to the community interpreting this info infographic, uh, the .org is more used uh, for community websites. Uh, and, and also there you can see the evolution because we have been doing this exercise since 2010. Now you can see that uh, there's been a, a growing number of websites uh, that have been uh, uh, turning into uh, business uh, and uh, also um, holding pages, uh, which again, um, the big difference is uh, when you click on the websites uh, and you can see an holding page and two minutes later it turns to be uh, a business website. That's uh, uh, the importance. Uh, but the, um, the most, uh, let's say, important thing is that with this exercise, we found out that 57% uh, uh, of our domain names were not having any website with content associated, against 43% with content associated. So again, those are some uh, examples of uh, monitoring and assessing tools you can have in place. Uh, to help you to define, to help you to design uh, your marketing campaigns. Uh, and, uh, and let's say that uh, uh, at the end, uh, um, these uh, kind of uh, uh, exercises must be run regularly. The important thing is that you run it regularly to make metrics, to create metrics against which you compare uh, the results. Uh, and uh, uh, again, uh, you have to acknowledge that there is always something in what you're going to do that is not possible to measure because it's marketing. Because anything that is related to marketing awareness in some cases is incredibly difficult to measure because there are so many emotional factors and all the emotional factors are very rarely possibly, uh, to, uh, possible to, to measure that influence uh, some decisions in the mind of the consumers. I'm going to show you some marketing options which we have experienced. Um, and you have so many marketing options. When I started at .u in 2007, making a campaigns online with banners 
was not much used. But it's not that it was not much used by us, a registry operating in the internet. It was not much used by anybody. And if you look at the uh, home page of the most popular um, newspaper in your country, and you look at that web page, uh, if they had it uh, in 2005, 2006, uh, and you look at the web page now, you can see the quantity of banners that are there now is uh, millions of times higher than the quantity of banners which were there 10 years ago. And this is shows to you that really the online marketing has grown exponentially in the past decade. But you still have a lot of opportunities when you think about how to market your product, how to market your top level domain. You can go for the standard printed option. You can go for online boundary. You can do it by social media, because social media are also a powerful tool to be used. You can have a campaign. Um, recently, there is a big competition between campaigns run by the so-called Google Display uh, network and the Facebook network. And they are both equally, equally uh, valuable because they both allow you to reach that customer segment you really like. Um, and we'll speak about that. You can do billboards. So you can have, and I've seen many when we come here in the morning, all these billboards uh, on the road. Uh, and those billboards are the airports. Uh, and those billboards are, um, again, something that you have to think about. Because uh, the fact that we have uh, now these online campaigns uh, doesn't mean that billboards are not popular. On the contrary, they can complement uh, the efforts that you do online, or they can serve you to pass uh, uh, a more, even stronger message. Because billboard, the time that a person stays in front of a billboard, is by definition much higher than the time a person spends in front of an online banner. And because especially some of these online banners, they are rotating. So the time available for some end user to pick up that banner, your banner, is incredibly lower than a billboard. The billboards stay there for a long, long time. And the, the key message when you decide to go for a billboard, the key, um, let's say, uh, advice is to keep the billboard there for a long time, minimum three years. Uh, and minimum three years generate a lot of confidence uh, in the people about the billboard. You can change the visual in the billboard, uh, but just try to use the same billboard, the same position and highway in an airport uh, for at least three years because it really generates a lot of awareness. Uh, you can participate in events. Uh, we spoke about that. It's important uh, to be present in events. If there is a big IT fair <coughs> in this country, um, why don't you have a little booth about uh, .eg or its equivalent in IBM? And you speak to an IT community, and they might not know you, but you have the chance to engage with them. Some of them they may become registrar, some of them they may become users, registrants. And it's really a good opportunity. We started this exercise uh, several years ago, and we are trying to be present in those IT fairs. And after several years, uh, you try at the beginning. And you try, and after some years, you see that uh, it's worth to be present at some fairs. It's not worth to be present at other fairs. But you try at the beginning, and you see the number of people that are coming to your booth, to your stand. They speak to you there. They want to be engaged with you. Um, when deciding what of these options you go for, think about the message. Think about the message and the slogan uh, very carefully. Because a message which may work for an online banner may not <coughs> work for a billboard. Again, think about the time of the people will spend in front of your visual. And uh, um, think about also the customer target, something that uh, must be appealing or might be appealing in an online banner, might not be appealing at all in a billboard, might not be appealing at all on a printed advertisement. So think about how to differentiate. Again, there are some elements that should stay the same. The logo, the basic visual should stay the same. But the big, big visual, and eventually the message must be shaped to the kind of uh, marketing tool you're going to use. This is incredibly important, and we have learned a lot of, with all the marketing tools we have used uh, over the years. And I'm going to show you quite a lot of examples. Uh, and uh, again, think about the budget. 
Because if you have a, like a fifty thousand dollars budget, is it better to go for three years billboard in a, the main airport of your country and complement the main billboard in that airport with a, a yearly uh, display campaign? Or is it better to have uh, forty thousand invested uh, in display campaigns uh, and ten thousand in a billboard for three months? Uh, think about how to invest uh, the marketing resources you might have uh, in the long term, not just something that it lasts for six months uh, and then you change the strategy completely. This is, should be really a careful strategy you spread over several years uh, because that's what also marketing is about. <coughs> I'm going to several kind of campaigns which we have developed uh, over the years. Uh, and now I'm going to come back to you with a question. So, this one is uh, uh, what we do twice a year. So, twice a year we run a campaign, a banner campaign, via the Google Display Network. The Google Display Network is a, a, a huge network. They have over 3 million, 3 million websites of different kinds of websites uh, which have partnered together with Google and on which you can have your banner displayed. The advantage of the Google um, network uh, like Facebook uh, is that if you tell to the Google account manager uh, with whom you will be put in touch, uh, if you tell them I would like to reach uh, students uh, of university aged between uh, 19 and 21, no? the sophistication they have uh, for their analytics uh, to make sure that when a student uh, between 19 and 21 years old uh, gets to one of these pages uh, of one of the websites that are having an agreement with the Google Display Network uh, and are shown your banner is almost 100%. So, they are able to really help you to target the customer segment you like to reach out. This is something really powerful. And it leaves you a bit speechless, uh, because at the same time, it, it maybe happened already to any of us uh, that when you go to a certain site, uh, and you go there by yourself, uh, because you're looking for something, at the same time, that website uh, is running a campaign via Google or by another banner network. And what happens is that then you stop, you have found the information. But then when you go back to uh, another site, uh, which is completely different, uh, a banner pops up uh, with the message from that previous site you looked for, because the website is promoting, uh, it's a company promoting some products. Uh, it's uh, extremely valuable when you go for airlines. Uh, when you go to an airline to check your ticket, uh, and it's, is it the right ticket, uh, is it boarding time, whatever, then you are basically pursued uh, the day after by the airline, so that whenever you are going, with whatever website you are surfing, you might have a banner of that airline promoting uh, new fares, promoting new destinations, and so on. So this is uh, something that is all linked uh, to the way we are tracked uh, when we surf the internet. And the Google Display Network is such uh, an in-depth network that helps you really to target your customer segment. We are, we are doing that uh, twice a year in selected European countries because you need to have a good budget. But you may also have a limited budget uh, and you may say, I do that with this budget for one week. And that could be extremely valuable to generate awareness and to also uh, direct uh, people to the landing page where they can register the .u domain name or your TLD domain name or any domain name with uh, uh, some good marketing materials that they may find available to motivate themselves to choose your extension as the best extension when they like to go online. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes? Please. Uh, very high edge showing up with the remarketing for the Yeah, it's, a, it's a basically they targeted you that you are, we are, you are looking for certain kind of information so that uh, they've targeted that, they've communicated that uh, to their, um, let's say, uh, provider of these kind of uh, services uh, and so for a certain uh, period of time you will be targeted uh, by all the buttons of that airline. And uh, 
this campaign was just one month. This campaign was uh, uh, one month, yes. And you had almost only seven thousand clicks. Yes. That's about yeah. two hundred and forty million displays. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this campaign, so if you want the uh, the detail of this campaign, we were targeting uh, um, four categories, uh, which are business, news, internet, and electronics. Uh, Google display they give you this option and you pick what categories of people or companies you like to reach out and we pick these four categories and uh, um, the results were incredibly good because for click-through rates, uh, click-through rates is when uh, um, somebody not only sees the banner, this is the, the, the um, sorry, these were impressions, so not clicks, so those were impressions. And so the impressions are when you see the banner. So when Google is telling you, yeah, somebody has seen your banner. The click through rate, which is 0.2% per, out of the 477, means that these people, they have not only seen the banner, but they have also clicked on the banner and they have ended on the landing page. That you have decided to be the landing page of that campaign. A click-through rate, on average, is considered to be good when it's above 0 0.12. How do they differentiate between seeing and uh, displaying? Because uh, 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 the so the scene is that when you open the page and then this banner comes up. So they know that you are on that page and the banner comes up. Display. That's the impression. That's what they call the impression. That's, that's the center. Center. Yeah. But then, when you click on the banner, that's what they call click-through rate, because through it means that you go to the landing page you selected. And again, a, a, a good average at the worldwide level is considered to be anything that is above 0 0.12%. And so, what's the campaign? How much does it cost? This campaign for one month costed 85,000 euros. For 1,000 clicks. Uh, 85,000 85, euros for 1,000 clicks, yes. It's per click? It's, uh, it's, it's, um, you can decide uh, in the Google display it's by forfait or per click. Uh, it's a forfait, it's a lump sum amount, so it's just one amount, they say you got this, or you can tell them I pay at the end on the basis of the number of clicks. Are you sure that this are the right yeah. clicks? Well, uh, you know, again, it's, it's a matter of trust. Uh, you know, you can have uh, some people somewhere in the world that they appoint to click and uh, they make the number for you, but we usually monitor that also the traffic on our landing page that people <coughs> comes from. Bad business. Bad Sorry? Bad business. Bad business because it was too expensive. Uh, $85 per, per click and it's five years. No, 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 because the, 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 the cost is uh, linked to impressions as well uh, with Google Display. Uh, so there is a, I don't remember what, how much uh, zero euro cents are per, per impression and how much uh, is uh, um, per click to ring. But there are, there are um, some sort of fees. Um, and, but again, again, uh, the important thing is that, that it's true, it costs a lot. But when you have a, a zero point twenty which is much above the 0 0.12, which is the standard one, that's considered to be an excellent campaign. So, uh, and, and this is, uh, we, are talk we, we are talking about the fact that uh, there were um, over about uh, 500,000 half million click, half, half, um, half million impressions. So, so it means that uh, uh, there were um, 500,000, almost 500,000 times uh, when people were exposed uh, to our bank, which is, uh, you know, Generate awareness uh, is, uh, is a good achievement. So you, you said the standard is 0 0.4? 0 0.4 action, action of total impressions. No, no. Whenever you run a campaign, and the campaign you have a click through rate which is above 0 0.12, that's considered to be a success. Yeah. I'm not saying that it, it, it goes always like this, uh, because uh, uh, sometimes. Uh, we had done it and we had uh, a click to rate which was uh, in the range of 0 0.08, which was really bad. And in that case, uh, but in that case what we do, because uh, when you run a Google campaign, you have an interface uh, and you see every day, you can see every day, 
what is the performance in the countries or the region we are selecting. And if you see, for instance, that the campaign in a specific country or region has a very low performance rates, like 0.0 and something, you can decide, but you see there are other regions or countries which perform much better. You may think after some days uh, that it's probably because of the vision, because of the message uh, that we translate in the local language, but maybe not the right message or the right vision for that language, uh, for that country. And so we redirect uh, all the traffic and all the budget uh, to other countries uh, where the campaign is performing better. So that uh, the number of impressions, uh, the number of times uh, people of that country might be exposed uh, to our banners becomes they become by default higher than the other countries, so we may drop the country. So you have uh, an incredibly um, interaction, looks like a, um, you know, a commercial for the Google display, but we have tried really different uh, display networks, uh, and the Google display networks allows you to have uh, an incredibly good uh, interaction during the campaign, uh, to steer the campaign uh, the way you believe it's better to do. So instead of wasting money, because we also have companies who said to us, uh, you, we do this for you and this is the best way to do it. And then at the end you pay a check at the end, but uh, you do not have the kind of control you can have with this, uh, with this network. Uh. Okay. Is, is this, sorry, is there an, an index between the 477,000 and the two reflecting if Google selected the right uh, selection of the right audience? Or? That, that uh, um, you know, we have to believe they have done it. What do you receive anything telling you what kind of audience they are using? No, no, no. We, we do have this kind of statistics. So in, in this case, in the case of this campaign, we knew that uh, most of the people who clicked on our banners were male and were male aged between uh, 35 and 55 for this campaign. No, I mean the more important part is to whom the visual was uh, displayed. Yeah, this is what I'm saying, that the visual was displayed to, in this ah. case, uh, to male aged between 35 and 55. And uh, male means uh, over 80%. Why would we need? We don't know. I mean, th we're talking about the, 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 the I mean, mm. probably the sites that were selected mm. and where it was displayed were sites that are mostly served by male. Yeah. So. Does it, does it reflect the right proportion for business uh, businessmen and, and, and it, it it reflects <coughs> it a bit. It reflects it a bit. Um, at the same time, and again, um, you can do that, uh, but nobody does it. But you can do that. Uh, in the interface, uh, you have the live list of websites where your banner is likely to show. And you can control it. So you can tick them in or tick them out. And so, <coughs> in our case, uh, business or news are an incredible huge category. So when we have started this campaign, uh, we have selected business and news, uh, but again, they are a big, big category, and they are, they are you know, news and news. And after one week, we have decided to get into the interface uh, and tick off some of the news sites, because we believe they were too local, or we believe they were news that were like too gossip style, and we were not interested in having our banner displayed on such kind of sites. So this is something that, again, you are allowed to do in this kind of network. So there was a pause, and then. The page that yeah, the click was leading to, was it? I'm going to show it to you. Oh, OK. Yes, it's the next slide. I said in the case of the how many English stations on the page can be? No, that's something that's uh, um, quite a sort of uh, sophistication assessment that we are not yet able to, to have. And that's because uh, um, uh, we can see, what we can see, I mean, what the exercise that we do is we check if during the time frame of the campaign, uh, we see if there is an increase on the number of registration from the countries uh, where the campaign takes place. Usually there is a correlation, usually. But it's also true that in these countries, uh, we may have registrars conducted their promotional campaigns. Uh, and in fact, once, uh, and it was last year, when uh, we opened the market to Norwegian, uh, Iceland, and Liechtenstein um, registrants, uh, what we saw, we did a, a campaign like this. Uh, and for the first time, we did a campaign in Norway. 
And we saw that um, the number of .u registered in Norway for the specific month of the campaign raised incredibly. But we are also aware that Active24, which was a great player in the registered player in the Norwegian market, they also did a launch campaign for the few in that market. And it was also a banner online campaign via the Google Display Network. So we believe that, okay, our campaign helped, but a large part of the job was also done by the local, uh, by a registrar having a local presence in that country and therefore register, pushing for the registration in that country. But this exercise, yes, we do. We cannot uh, have the certainty that all the registrations are linked uh, to the campaign, but uh, uh, we believe that there is some correlation. Okay, uh, the landing page of the... Uh, yeah, I'll show it to you, yeah. So this is the landing page we have created. It's very marketing oriented, uh, and the top thing we have decided uh, is to, again, this is a campaign targeting end user, regis possible registrants, uh, is to put uh, prominent uh, the availability of the domain name, because uh, somebody who's clicking on that banner wants to know if there is a chance for them to register a domain name, and if that domain name is available. And we have put also some testimonials here, and it's a testimonial showcase. And in this case, we have played with uh, <coughs> two big companies, uh, um, which have embraced .u as their uh, main website. Uh, and also with Flavio Pimenta, and Flavio Pimenta is a, 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 a tennis player number 11 in the WTA ranking, and she has been also using her .u site uh, and very actively, and therefore we decided that, and that's uh, an example I'm going to give you, to sponsor her, sponsor her when she participates in tournaments. Uh, she's wearing uh, the unit uh, or .u patch uh, on her uh, suit, uh, and that has been incredibly popular. Again, uh, if you think that she recently played uh, in the Miami um, WTA uh, tournament, <coughs> the Miami WTA tournament on TV, the matches she was playing were watched at worldwide level by over 70 million uh, audience. Uh, that's really incredible. So 70 million people were exposed uh, to our logo. They were exposed uh, um, to somebody wearing uh, our logo. So, and again, this is something that we can do at local level because sport always attracts uh, a lot of people and generates a lot of awareness. So this was the landing page we use, and this is the landing page we use for most of our marketing campaigns. There is another uh, exercise we have done. It is the, sorry. the landing page of the different uh, users, we, uh, we check that in a bit. So yeah. are you reluctant to register a specific register? So if they, if they see, once it, they insert it, it's a good uh, question, thank you. So if they, if they check the domain name, and the domain name is available, what they see is that uh, there are three steps to register the domain name. And the first step is uh, uh, to contact a registrar, because they cannot register directly with us. Contact the registrar, what they have uh, is immediately, <coughs> based on the IP addresses, uh, <coughs> immediately they have a list of the registrar from the country of the IP address. Which, cannot, which might not be the country of the person who's uh, looking for the domain name because, uh, of course, it depends how the IP addresses are redirected and directed. <coughs> but this is what they have first. Uh. And then, secondly, they have uh, the list of all the registrars divided by country. So this is what they have uh, once they have checked if the domain name is available. What we are going to do in the future is to put uh, the alternative domain name option. So if not available, We'll check in our database for similar domain names, which might be available, and therefore we propose alternatives. So I uh, think the search domain name is registered, I think, I think you can check the, the data to come in. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 also, we also track how many um, are coming from this. this uh, is, uh, uh, for, for this, uh, we use uh, um, to check how many are, let's say, standard visitors uh, or how many are coming from certain websites that are also the websites uh, on which our banner was displayed. That we would check for sure, yes. There are not 
software didn't cost on such a campaign? I mean, the visuals, the team working, so, I mean, I'm This was also all done in house. In house. In house. So no, no cost. I mean, the cost of, of, of the person who is an internal web designer who is looking after our website. I mean, if you pay Google $25,000, you're talking about $200,000 or $200,000? Yeah, that's standard. No, why, why $200,000? You said $85,000 for Google. Yes, for yes. Yeah. And then the visual we're done also in house. You don't have that. Everything was done in house. You have a graphic designer. We have a graphic web designer who is working now. So. But to develop, uh, just to give you an idea about prices, because we have become an expert. So we, have, we develop this kind of uh, banners uh, in all the languages uh, of the European Union. And to develop such kind of banner in uh, 24 languages, uh, including its dynamic banner, now you see it started by its dynamic one, um, that costs around 2,500 euros. Uh, to have it developed uh, in the 24 languages of the European Union. Sorry, 2,500. Mm -hmm. 2,500 euros uh, to develop that kind of banner in 24 languages. Of course, it would cost much less. Uh, uh, and I believe in, in this region it costs much, much less. Uh, because uh, the competition is uh, it's quite tough. Uh, and to create that banner, if you are a graphic, a good graphic, uh, to create such a banner, it takes you between 5 and 15 minutes. That you don't need a marketing or a graphical expert to, to design. I mean, you're putting all that money, you need someone to make sure that how would be the response to such a banner from this community? From That's this something that uh, when, you, when you go for the Google campaign, you have your account manager who's there to, um, um, you present the visual to the account manager, and they also provide you the advice. Otherwise, for other kind of uh, uh, exercise that we, we are doing, we work with external agencies. What you know, they are telling us is what we like to implement or they uh, help us with the implementation is the right one. But in this case, uh, for the display, you can count on, on the Google uh, network. What kind of team do you have to, to look at the analytics uh, and prepare the reports and analysis? Yeah, and we have, uh, um, okay, by, by contract with the European Union, we are obliged to provide support uh, in the 24 languages. So my team has uh, one person speaking in uh, each of the languages, so there are uh, different people speaking all the languages of the European Union. Uh, these people, they provide support. They language for each other. Yeah, it's uh, English, or, or English or Dutch. English or Dutch. Otherwise, it be. It's English or Dutch or French. Um, but uh, they, do, they do also spend some time, so part of their work, uh, is to look into this kind of analytics. Uh, part of the work is to look and help uh, the marketing team. The marketing and communication team is made of three people, and uh, they coordinate this kind of. Uh, so one person is required for normally single language. Uh, one person per language, more or less. But we have uh, multilingual people who are covering two or three languages, uh, and uh, the person. Uh, um, deals uh, both with you know providing support to the registrar, so doing the account management with the registrar, but also uh, is helping uh, you know for translations. Uh, again, we have to um, make sure that our website, the, the public site, is available in 24 languages. Uh, so anytime we upload a new page on our website, it must be in 24 languages. So that person, what kind of experience? The person as uh, um, most of the people I have in my team have a. Uh, uh, different kind of backgrounds. Uh, could be technical background, could be humanities background, uh, it depends. But um, what I've seen is that um, to, um, to, to deploy a person uh, at such level that can you know, make uh, uh, all these kind of tasks uh, is between six and eight months from the time uh, the person starts working. Okay. Training and you know just being uh, in the field and working directly in the field. And to, to get them on board. To get them fully on board. And this yeah. is something that you do in house. We do all in house completely in house. So the, the person uh, starts working um, with us and, uh, and they receive a three weeks uh, full three weeks training program. Uh, and then uh, after three weeks of a full training program in house, uh, they start to work together with a person and uh, uh, from, you know, little by little, 
they, they take off by themselves. What we look for when we recruit a person to look for a specific country is we try to make sure that the person is uh, linked to the country. So to make sure that they have a knowledge of the country uh, and they know how the, the business in the country works. Uh, so they are not completely illiterate, but they do have an expertise in that country. So, uh, sorry. So about the landing pages, they yep. are not activated from the uh, scrum or, or from Google to take them to this page. No, no. And <coughs> when, uh, when uh, we produce the banner, when we produce the banner, we give the banner to Google. Yep. And we give the banner to Google and we tell Google that this is the landing page in English and this is available in the 24 languages as well. So that banner is in English it goes to this page. Then we give the banner in Bulgaria because the Bulgarian version of this page. So we tell Google to make the mention and they do, they do make the match. One on one domain, one on one domain. Then you can ask me for not activate domain. If you don't convert the domain, for it. So it goes to the landing page for their site. Yeah. That, that's something, so that, that uh, just for the other. So, so we're talking about one on one, not mention on mention. And they are uh, probably the biggest, one of the biggest, uh, two biggest uh, German registrar players. Uh, and what they do is that when you register a domain name with them, uh, and you do not uh, have oh, immediately right. have a website, uh, they provide you with a sort of uh, what? temporary yeah. page. Uh, this has been quite <coughs> criticized, I must say, by some others. Uh, because in this landing page uh, that you see, you see uh, like commercial for uh, Einstein 101. Yeah. And you know, uh, some uh, customers of uh, um, Einstein Einstein <coughs> said to us that they were not so happy to have this with them. And of course we said to them, it was the choice of that register, you may change your register. Mm -hmm. But this is something that uh, indeed uh, they are doing. So how technically they do that? They, I, I don't know, I don't know um, how much time they wait uh, for doing that. Uh, I believe it's done immediately uh, when the, the domain name becomes active. Uh, so the domain name becomes active until uh, the moment uh, they have their own website, uh, uh, they have uh, uh, this uh, temporary landing page. But it's the gap between the registrant and the registrar. Here we're talking about our uh, landing page. Gonna show you some other campaigns. Uh, uh, first one being uh, uh, a campaign that we have been doing uh, uh, in the back part of the trucks. Uh, because what we have seen uh, is that uh, uh, .u became very popular uh, in uh, the SMEs of the transport sector in some countries. So what we have decided is to use the transport sector to promote uh, .u. And in Europe there is a, a, a company called Fleet Media and they are providing you this opportunity because they liaise with the big truck companies traveling all around Europe to ensure your positioning in the back part of the truck. And in countries like Belgium, the Netherlands and Germany where people remain stuck in traffic, a bit like here, you have this in front of you and either you get completely upset or you start falling in love with what you have in front. And uh, we have done it uh, for uh, three years. We have stopped it. Uh, uh, last year, so 2014 was the last year of this campaign, and uh, uh, we stopped it because uh, we didn't have uh, much, uh, let's say, freedom <coughs> in uh, uh, shaping the campaign. So um, the visual should have been of a certain kind because we were obliged to have a certain kind of visual because of the size of the truck, of course, uh, the back part of the truck, uh, and also, and on top of that. Uh, um, it was difficult to measure this, this campaign. It was really difficult to measure. We were told that uh, uh, in this case uh, we had uh, um, 30 uh, trucks uh, around uh, six countries in Europe uh, and trucks which were traveling uh, um, around these countries. Uh, and according to this company, we had uh, uh, about 1,000 impression hours. So, um, every hour, according to this company, 
our advertisements were seen by around 1,000 people who may you know, see them in the traffic. Again, it's a, it's a quite weak measurement. It's quite weak measurement. But um, we, we saw them. We saw them when traveling in the Netherlands, in Belgium, in Germany. We saw them. And <coughs> it's, a, it's, a nice, it's a nice option. It's a nice marketing option. Again, difficult to measure. What we continue to do, and in this case we have been doing that with this uh, tennis player, is uh, this billboard campaign in uh, uh, several airports. Uh, yes? Just on that slide, mm -hmm. you had, you had the, again used something that you say don't use. Say conquer Europe with your .eu domain name rather website. Mm -hmm. And for people who are driving. Yeah, that's correct. correct. Uh, that's correct. Uh, but in this case, uh, in this case, uh, we have decided uh, with the agency which uh, developed the um, the uh, campaign with us uh, that we cannot use website, and that's because uh, I'm said to you, and in fact I said to you when you speak, you use website, not the main name. Uh -huh. But in this case, uh, uh, and especially for us, uh, this would be a fraudulent uh, commercial because we don't deal with website. We deal with the main names. Mm -hmm. And being in this European Union framework, we need to really stick to the rules because we work at the end for the European Commission. So, in this case, it yeah, should not have been. But, no, no. but it's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point because uh, think about that. I don't know about the country or country, you can do that. Uh, eventually, you can do that. Uh, but in our case, uh, we, we cannot do that. So, when we speak uh, to possible customers, uh, when we speak, uh, we use the website word instead of the main name. But when we do a marketing campaign, we need to stick to the, the, the specific area in which we operate, which is the management of the main name. So, but it's a, it's a very good point, indeed. Could you use web address for us? Uh, web address is also perceived to be not uh, corresponding to the reality of the product that we manage. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's a bit tricky. And uh, this is what we have been doing in the Brussels Airport since three years, uh, using this testimonial law. And uh, as you can see, the logo, some elements of the visuals, they stay the same, but the visual, the main visual changes. Uh, and the, the, the slogan is uh, the perfect match for your business, uh, playing with the word match, because uh, match is also a uh, word using the tennis uh, environment. Uh, and uh, um, again, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to have these billboards, but uh, we have decided to discontinue the billboards uh, in uh, Munich, Milan, and Copenhagen, because in these airports it's not possible at all uh, to have uh, somebody going around the billboard and survey the people who are standing at the gate uh, and trying to understand how they like or not like what they see. And so we have decided, because it was too difficult to measure, uh, to discontinue. We continue the Brussels one, because the Brussels one, um, there is a, a company that does it uh, on behalf of the airport. Uh, and of course, uh, because of all these security measures, uh, it's not so easy to have somebody sneaking inside the airport and do the survey for you, but you must have uh, um, um, really real companies working with the airport company to, to survey what's the impression of the visitors, what's the impression of the travelers against the visual. And what we have seen, especially in Brussels, is that we are able, thanks to these billboards, to differentiate ourselves from the European Union as institution. So by thanks to these billboards, people, when arriving or departing from Brussels, this is uh, what we have uh, been uh, um, told, uh, thanks to this study, is that people now understand that it's uh, something different. Uh, so it's something still linked uh, to the European Union, but it's something at the same time different. So there is a different image, uh, different perception of this is uh, uh, as a top level domain of Europe and not of the European Union. And this was, at the end, uh, the message we wanted to give with this kind of uh, billboard. You seem to be targeting hostage audience. Hostage. Hostage. No hostage. I mean hostage. Exactly. I've never heard that, but it's a nice definition. We we like to think differently. We like to think that uh, we target uh, 
the audience which is uh, professionals or SMEs uh, more business oriented because at the end uh, we selected those airports because they are more business oriented than others. Uh, and so that's why we have, uh, and we also, it's not, uh, you know, behind this billboard uh, there is a, a quite a lot of reasons because it's not only business oriented or uh, SMEs uh, but also the choice of the game in this case makes a difference. Uh, because when you liaise with an airport, uh, you know by definition there are some gates that are more used by charter flights uh, um, which go to holiday destination and there are more business oriented gates. Uh, and this is the choice we have made also when we decided to go for the campaigns. Uh, so for each airport we have selected a specific gate because we had uh, all the flight timetables, all the flights uh, leaving and arriving at those gates uh, um, in a month. So we say, okay, let's go for that gate. And because we knew that on those flights there were more business oriented people than other gates, other flights. So it's really yeah. quite a complex process. And that was not actually, I mean, I'm, I'm using the terminology because I no, have another hostage user. I mean, for example, the magazine is. The, magazine, yeah. the in flight magazine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> they are your hostage. <laughs> No, the, the, this is something that we have, uh, and this is something, it's a nice reason that we have done, I'd like to share it with you, is uh, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, you are at some point proposed uh, by these uh, agencies uh, um, to have your logo or your message on a boarding pass or on a, on a, on a plastic uh, cup or on, on tissue. But then uh, you have always to think that all these things are normally ends into the garbage. And at some point you may see your logo and a lot of your logos, a lot of your these things that, which are branded with your logo in the garbage, and that's not nice. So we have decided not to go for these things that um, have a, a lifetime which is very short and therefore they end into the disposal garbage or whatever um, soon. So we have decided not to, not to go for it. But there are companies who are doing that. There are companies who get a mug, you get a, a, a tissue, and there is a, a, the logo of that company. We prefer not to do that. I think in branding, uh, branding business, for me, uh, it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a trade <coughs> it's a, your decision. I mean, we have decided because of that, we wouldn't have liked to go that far. So, but again, it's a, it's a decision. Uh, another decision, it's uh, like uh, you decide the cost of one of these billboards is like the cost uh, of painting an aircraft uh, with your logo. So it's not much. And you can have the aircraft uh, painted with your logo, with your slogan for a while, but you see the contract because we have gone through that as well. You see the contract, and you see that uh, if the airplane crashes, <laughs> <laughs> if the airplane crashes, uh, uh, any of the European companies, uh, airlines, uh, they have a company specialized uh, in being on the crash site uh, in two hours, uh, whatever in Europe, uh, and they cover completely your logo. But, as I said to them, that would have been nice in the 18th century, but now we are in 2015. And by the time these two hours, there are so many tweets, and so many Facebook posts, and so many pictures posted of our logo crashed with the plane. <laughs> that, sorry, I don't like it. <laughs> so, but we received this proposal from various agencies every month, even recently after what happened in Europe. But we keep receiving that. that and we say, I say always no, because I know that no matter how good this company is, your logo crashed. Will be seen. <laughs> so, no way, sorry. Non negotiable with me. So, this uh, again is it's quite a good way to promote your TLD. If you have a, a, a main airport in your country, it could be a nice way to promote it. And think, take it into consideration. Um, this is the kind of uh, uh, analytics we have when we evaluate our landing page. The landing page, uh, you see where uh, the uh, visitors who are coming from. You see the peaks of the visits. You see if there were new visitors or returning visitors. You see where they were coming from. 
So these are the sources. And, uh, and you see that uh, the large part uh, in this case was coming from the Google uh, display. But a large part was coming also from, from YouTube because uh, YouTube we have a channel with our testimonial videos. So this is the kind of analytics we assess every time we have a campaign. It's a part complex, uh, complex assessment, uh, but we do it. And we do it because uh, it serves to us uh, to design the next campaign. And, and, and again, um, as, uh, as you can see, it's uh, not a one minute job. It takes some, some days, uh, but it's uh, a valuable job. And I would really recommend uh, uh, when you get into marketing your TLD that you take and set aside some time to do this kind of monitoring of what you're doing. Well, one of the things that's useful for this analytics is, is to notice what's not working. So if you're not, so they immediately what, what you see is that something is not working. If you have a Google campaign and you're not getting any yeah. ads from Google, then you've chosen the words so wrong. This is done by us on our landing page. Yeah. And that is also the Google, and then we will match the two. And one interesting thing that happened two years ago for us is that we, um, we, we thought we had started a campaign with Google, and then the second day I said to my team, can I get some data? And that, that was flat. Yeah. I said, excuse me, what's happening? And then they call immediately the account manager of Google and they say, what's going on here? And they say, sorry, we are late in, with your campaign, it's not yet live. And then I exploded like a volcano. What? We have already paid you and it's not live. And of course they apologized and they gave us one week, up, one week for free to apologize. But you know, it's, it's really good to have this kind of uh, processes in place so you can monitor how things are going. I'm gonna, through, I'm gonna go through very quickly um, through some uh, campaigns that, that we have also supported. This was a, a flyer that we have produced uh, for, um, to be distributed on trains in Slovakia <coughs> because, uh, believe it or not, in Slovakia, that's why you have to customize your marketing effort uh, to the country. Trains in Slovakia are the most popular um, transport tool where to advertise. And we have distributed this flyer in, in Slovakia. And the, the, if I remember correctly, the sentence they are saying uh, that the, the .u is a safe harbor where, where to go. Um, we have uh, supported uh, a picture competition in Estonia. So the best uh, .u spotted in Estonia. We have also customized uh, in Portugal uh, some uh, buses for a while. So these are kind of campaigns uh, and as I said we have participated in Paris and events. Uh, this is uh, one of our most recent uh, boots at the, most, uh, at the World Masking Days in uh, Rust in Germany. We have done some uh, comic strips, uh, if you like to read the comic strip. We have done some comic strips uh, and uh, um, comic strips which were linked uh, to some slogans. Uh, in this case is uh, broaden your market uh, and we have um, we had a French artist, Madrid, uh, who created for us this little dino as a sort of uh, um, little uh, uh, mascot for us. Uh, and uh, uh, in this case, uh, for us, uh, but I guess for all of us, uh, we have to play carefully because of sensitivities. And so, you know, you don't make fun of uh, certain nationalities, you don't make fun of Europe, uh, you know, it's really a tricky area where to, where to make uh, uh, marketing. And in this case, uh, the comic strips, uh, there were eight different comic strips uh, um, linked to eight reasons uh, why to go for that you. And those were the eight reasons, uh, and each reason was linked uh, to a comic strip. We are catching up very well. What is equal quality? Sorry? Equal quality. Equal quality. Equal quality. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> we have also sponsored, and this is a nice and almost at no cost exercise. We have sponsored a team of one European school who's been participating <coughs> in several tournaments. And those teams were ping pong, volleyball. Uh, uh, soccer <coughs> and uh, uh, basketball and uh, those teams uh, 
basically we just paid the, 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 the suit. So the cost of this, uh, and they played with our suit for over one year, and two of them they won at European level in these school competitions. Uh, the cost of this uh, was less than 2,000 euros. Uh, but it exposed, uh, I mean it was difficult for to measure, but they participated these four teams uh, in 17 tournaments around Europe. Uh, and with our, and we have exclusivity of our logo on their suit, on their tournament suit. So that is a very low cost activity that can generate a lot of awareness for you. What's the logo for you? It's uh, our uh, website, so it's yuri.eu. It's a strike with yuri.eu. We have also, um, in some countries, uh, which are Austria and the Netherlands, uh, we have also produced this kind of postcards. Uh, and I don't know if it's popular here, but there are some uh, uh, bars and, uh, and canteens uh, and restaurants uh, in uh, uh, Europe, uh, in some European countries. Uh, and at the entrance, you have a, a, a little shop with this kind of postcards that you can find. Uh, and the postcards are sponsored by some companies. And we have produced one for uh, Austria with a reference to the, the waltz, uh, which is a popular dance in Austria, and to the tulip. Uh, because that's uh, uh, one of the products uh, of Netherlands. Uh, and we're trying again to, to make nice postcards uh, about us without impacting on any sensitivity. And again, this was also an extremely low cost uh, with a nice, a nice uh, impact on awareness because uh, most of our registrars operating in the Netherlands uh, and in Austria, as we couldn't monitor much uh, how uh, they impacted on awareness, but the best uh, was that most of our registrars operating in those two countries, they complimented us for this initiative and they say it was really nice uh, to help them to promote the appeal. They're not funny on the red dogs. They're not funny? You don't find funny? No. And yes, uh, you can, it's a website. Uh, because on this one, on the other side, uh, there was the logo of a Dutch registrar. So it's, uh, it's like that. No, but you have an EU website, it's just really great. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad, huh? Okay. So, we'll start the afternoon with the, an exercise, uh, but uh, uh, we have gone through all these campaigns, uh, and what, which of the actions uh, we have seen do you think it went better? This is the question before lunch. Apart from the billboards, I was going to say, apart from the billboards. The yeah, Edwards, the plane that's built as such. Thank you. The track, the track. Uh, the plane. Uh, the plane was taken in competition because it's televised. And once the wind splashed over, the tennis player, no. Because it depends on who she's playing against. <laughs> yes, I only watch out when I know who she's playing against. Edward's campaign was the most popular. Any other guests? You tell me what, awareness or getting more websites? I mean, it all depends. Globally, globally speaking, so what do you think we believe it went uh, better than the other? According to the uh, statistics, uh, yes, please. The Google display. Yeah. The Google display because it's easily measurable. Yeah. But and apart from the Google no. display. A direction directly registered website. Yeah. Apart from the Google display. The school one. School? The school. We have two schools. Yeah. Think about the investment uh, against uh, the outcome, against yeah. the possible return. Think about that. So, any further guess? I'm not going to allow you to go to lunch at the moment. No, serious. It's the right question. It's the right answer. You should answer the right answer to those questions. Yeah, <laughs> you, you must. <coughs> okay, if you think about the investment against uh, what we believe uh, and what we have assessed being uh, the impact, uh, the school is indeed uh, the one which most exposed us. Uh, because uh, he had an incredibly high coverage in media. And uh, again, we just paid the suit of these students. Uh, and we had an incredibly high coverage even on TV. 
because these students were, um, re were awarded in a, a public ceremony which was broadcasted on, on TV. And, and so our logo was visible at an incredibly low price. And we wouldn't have had such an exposure at such a cost if we had decided for a commercial in the TV. It would have costed us uh, 1,000 times more for 30 seconds. Uh, and those students were there in this award ceremony for two hours with our logo. And our logo was incredibly visible. And again, uh, they were also very active in social media platforms uh, so that they really exposed <coughs> us a lot. Uh, and the cost in that case was really under 2,000 euros uh, for something that at the end uh, valued uh, more than 300,000 euros if we are done it differently. So again, this is a, a, a case a study which I really wanted to underline because with little you can make a lot. And this is a, extremely valid if you have uh, um, financial considerations to be taken into account. And please think about that. And think about also that, uh, as I said yesterday, some little co-funded marketing campaigns uh, which we developed in partnership with our registrars, they had a much higher impact than the registrar contains. So think about that. And we'll resume after lunch with an exercise. Lunch is now until 2.30, am I correct? Yes, yes. 2.35, pause. Um, I, I don't know if you remember um, the marketing session at one of the CCNSO meetings. Um, Which one? <laughs> um, where the most popular uh, was the Philippine um, advert or campaign, uh, which featured an almost native lady uh, on the front. Um, okay. And, um, most you can't go for the It's forbidden. Yeah, that was the uh, response in the meeting that the Philippines. Uh, indicated that that was their most successful campaign. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they approached things like that. I mean, it's their choice. Uh, in our case, again, we have quite a, 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 huge, a huge amount of sensitivities to take into account. And, uh, we cannot afford to make these kind of mistakes. Okay. So it would be a mistake in Europe. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yes. Can I uh, make my comments? Please, please. Okay. It's not yet the other lunch, though. Sorry. Hello, Ali. It's time for my three hours lecture about IPI. Five minutes. It's only five minutes. Our friends from last week has already heard them, but I'd like to tell you once more inside the IPI and I'd like to uh, talk to our new friends and old friends as well about the information technology institute, IT. Uh, it is a government IT training institute that is affiliated to the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, uh, the Egyptian Ministry of Information and Communication Time. Uh, uh, ITI has been established since 1993. It's now more than 20 years old. It, the main three training programs that ITI presents are the following. The, one, the first one is nine months long and it is specialized for the Egyptian university graduates from the uh, IT or engineering background. The second one is for the Egyptian university students during the study in, in, in the universities to be specialized in the BPO or the business process outsourcing industry or to join the call center industry and other industries related to BPO. The third one is training of the trainer, or TOT, or TTT, if you like to call it, uh, to train the IT trainers on the different specializations of IT. Let's go to the first one once again, that I'm proud to be one of the graduates, and as, as well as Heisen, as well as uh, Adam, who else? No one? Okay. So uh, it covers the bandwidth. Uh, really? Right? You are one of the graduates. Very proud of this <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, the ITI or the Nine Month Program is um, covers all the bandwidth of the IT specializations regarding uh, networks, security, 
mobile gaming, mobile development, uh, web development. Uh, we uh, receive the graduates from the Egyptian students, train them inside IT for nine months to join the IT professional module. The second statement that I would like to say is that we love Africa. We love Africa. We love to cooperate with the African countries. We uh, had successful stories with Uganda, and we made something called e Uganda that is similar to e Egypt to help the uh, friends from Uganda to establish the DPO industry and uh, have call center to establish there and enter this market. We have a very successful story with our friends from Djibouti. They are uh, uh, also uh, and Djibouti Telecom. Uh, they also have received training and uh, received some knowledge transfer from the ITI. All our cooperations with Africa, or other than Africa, is bi-directional. We all learn from each other. We try to transfer for 20 years or more training knowledge to the African countries to help them. Once more, remember that we are governmental, so non-profit, so we are not seeking any money, but we are seeking help to the Africa. Regarding content developers, and we are so eager to uh, cooperate with uh, trainers from Europe, experts from Europe in the domain of IT, content developers institutes, to uh, be able to deliver uh, the up-to-date and the top-notch technology inside the IT. So, regarding cooperation with African and yes. Arab countries, yes, uh, Arab countries also as well, yes. Okay, uh, means that um, uh, African and Arab students could come here to, to Cairo to have nine months uh, courses, or you send your trainers for, for African and Arab countries? Both, both are available. Uh -huh. Arab and African students can come here, but not to join the nine months specifically, mm -hmm. but to join a tailored or customized course that can be customized upon signing an agreement with the African country. Also, our trainer, and I might be in ITI, has visited Africa more than Africa himself, so they can go to any African country and train and deliver the knowledge to any uh, to any uh, African country. Also, upon signing an agreement, or upon they asking the special uh, demand from this. So all courses are listed on your website, iti.net.eu. Yes, this is the most important thing. Iti.net.eu. <laughs> 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 they asking today, 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 they